Welcome to Loop Think Insights. Chris J. Snook here with my good friend Jay Guilford. Hey, hey. We are sitting here, guys, in the O Theater, which wow. is one of the most spectacular venues I've ever been in, inside of the world entertainment capital, Las Vegas. And if you haven't been here in a while and you haven't been to one of these shows, you are overdue. Gotta come. Do. Gotta come. We're going to talk with Jay today about where you go from world class, because I think most of the people that are tuning in for this, looking for insights from their C-level friends like you, yeah. are going Cirque du Soleil, like, that's a brand like that's you know i can't not get away from that when yeah. i'm in vegas so yeah. so where do you go why is it world class number one if it is and then we're gonna we're gonna through the next 30 minutes or so really dive into you know where the opportunities are some of the things you do to innovate but and also where some of your current challenges are because part of the whole loop think insights brand and concept is not only for people today get insights from you which i know they're going to but also for them to feed back some insights yeah. as as you start to talk through some of the challenges you're having in real time so um, so let's talk about it. You you head up Spark by Cirque du Soleil. Yes, yes, exactly. For those who maybe don't know or haven't yet been to a show, which there might be some, or has been a while. Very few, I can imagine. Very few. <laughs> Very few. But, but yeah. for those who may have not really thought much about Cirque du Soleil other than really great performances and really, you know, unbelievable mm -hmm. shows, what is Cirque and then where does Spark kind of fit? Like, why Spark? What is it? Where does it fit within the universe of well, Cirque? Well, Cirque, Cirque is... You know, like the circus meets Alice in Wonderland, if you've seen the show. It is a uh, spectacle, you know, for example, the old theater is a 1.5 million gallon pool that goes from solid to liquid in 20 seconds. We have acrobats, we have divers. My so bathtub doesn't do that. It doesn't, mine doesn't either. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure there's one for sale somewhere. Right. So Cirque du Soleil is, I would say, the king or queen of circus spectacle. Um, so the cost stage is an 80 ton stage that rotates 360 degrees. You can come see that in Vegas. The O is a 1.5 million gallon pool that goes from solid to liquid. So I, when I think about Cirque, I think about spectacle. I think about premium performance. We are the best of the best, I like to say. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I think I think you you guys have gotten a lot of credit in the business community. I, mm -hmm. I know Blue Ocean Strategy, which was a great business yeah, amazing. book, a, yeah. a big bestseller yeah. years ago, referenced you as, as yeah. one of the case studies of here's how you look at an industry and totally disrupt it. And, and they were talking specifically about what was broken about the circus. Yeah, exactly. And, and how Cirque did that. So you your DNA has been innovative. Yeah. Um, but it's it's oftentimes tough to to be innovative day in and day out in a business, right? We, yeah. we all have innovation hubs and we talk about that, but what does it mean to be innovative from Cirque's perspective um, today? And, and how has that been the case maybe as long as you've been here or since the beginning? Well, I think it's always pushing the envelope, always thinking differently. And I think that part of the way that Cirque innovates is through partnerships. Um, I think that's really what really great, what's really great about Cirque is that we are a circus. Um, we are a corporate entity too. So by default in our DNA, we have to think differently. So um, some of the things that um, we try to innovate in is the way that we produce live performance, the way that we think about it, the way that we cast, and then when we bring our artists in. What's so really what's a such as? So give me an example of when you say thinking about performance compared to something else that's Broadway show, something like that, which is also a high mm -hmm. value production yeah. performance. How do you think differently about that? What is what is just innately different well, about Cirque in, in your total all approach? Because there's elements of, of what you do that other companies don't necessarily think about on a daily basis yeah. that they have to do. Yeah. Because they're not putting on shows at yeah. 7 o'clock. Exactly. So one key example is that when a Broadway show is produced, it's set and it's locked. And it's great. Cats is great. It's amazing. Uh, Phantom is great. It's amazing. When a Cirque du Soleil show is created, it's not set and locked. It's constantly changing. For example, the uh, Love Show, for mm -hmm. example, Beatles right. Love, um, created years ago, great, fantastic, amazing, worked with Apple Corps. And about two years ago, we said, we need to refresh the show. Mm -hmm. So we do that with almost every show at Cirque du Soleil. We look at the show, we say, how can we make it more relevant? How can we make it more contemporary? So with the Beatles Love, for example, what we did, we added some special effects, we added some new projection, we added some new acts, so we can make the show more relevant. And um, that's really great for the consumer because it creates a better spectacle. And also, um, in terms of business, we get return customers. You've seen Love yeah. before, yep. and we say, it's a new show now, come see it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then you have to deliver on that, right? So yeah. like, if I come yeah. back, I'll be okay, you know, yeah. I'll be okay if it's as good as it was before, which was phenomenal. Yeah. But if you make me the promise, yeah. right? so every brand listening to this, you know, they're, we're talking to B2B brands, we've got fin, you know, tech, fin services brands, there's yeah. probably some CPG folks watching yeah. this. There's a lot of different people 
meaning they don't all sell the same thing. Brand yeah. promise doesn't mean the same thing because a consumer package brand has to think about that differently than a B2B yeah. brand, yeah. right? Yeah. You guys are a, a customer-facing brand. You're mm -hmm. also a corporate-facing brand, which we'll get out in a, in a second. But as a customer-facing brand, you make me a promise that the show's going to kick ass. Yeah. And it either does or it doesn't. Yeah. Now, for you guys, for 20-some-odd years now, yeah. right, you've proven that. Yes. But when you make me the promise again that it's going to be better, come back again mm -hmm. and, and separate from my $100 ticket or whatever yeah, it is yeah. again. A little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dated, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to get a you discount. You need to refresh I'm your knowledge of this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so when, I'm, when I'm spending that money again, right, you're, you're now having to deliver the original promise, which I already have an expectation. Because, mm -hmm. like, the first time I saw one of your shows, I was blown away. Yeah. Like, I, I was blown away. I, mm -hmm. I'd been to Broadway shows my whole life and mm -hmm. love Broadway. Mm -hmm. The first time I saw a Cirque show, I was like, w wow. Yeah, yeah. And that's a benefit, and it's a curse. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is because what people are asking is like, what can you show us differently? And even inside of Cirque, I'll, I'll tell you a key example of that. So um, seven shows uh, on the Strip two years ago, and we had seen them all inside of Cirque. We, and then they said, we're going to do MJ1. And, you know, we as, as people inside of Cirque, as Cirksters, we get to see the show first. And we're like, oh, God, you know, another show. We know we're great. What can you show us next? So yeah. we're very cynical because we had seen it all. Have you seen MJ1? I have not yet. It's on my list. Well, we're going to get you, we're gonna, we're gonna get you there. CES. Uh, no spoiler <laughs> alert, but pr the projections are amazing. Um, yeah. 5,000 plus speakers. And then I've heard the dancing's phenomenal. The dancing's yeah. phenomenal. And then they do this thing with the light up suits. And when we saw the light up suits, even as people inside of Cirque who had seen it all, I'd seen Totem, I'd seen Lucy, yeah. I'd seen all of the, um, the resident shows, we were like, wow, they've done it again. Um, so even internally, we're surprised by what our creators produce. So, so let's, let's talk about how brands listening to this, regardless of B2B, B2C, can, can put themselves in, in your shoes and think about their product, their service, their offering, their, their mm -hmm. internal culture. Yeah and think about customer experience through the lens of, you know, what do we have to shift? And then how can we shift it? What can I learn from Cirque as far as how they think about alignment across the corporate yeah. and the performance entity? Because yeah. they're two different dynamics yeah. that are relying on each other, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, what can they learn from you as it relates to spectacle? And then, and then I'll have a follow-up to that as far as um, how you think about product in general. Yeah. But what I, can they learn about from spectacle? I think this, what's really important is that for a lot of companies, they may assume that uh, a focus on high-level customer experience is a choice. You know, we had a Kmart Australia, a $5 billion retail powerhouse. They came to us and they said, you know, we want to be better at customer experience mm -hmm. for Cirque du Soleil because people are spending huge sums of money when they come to Vegas. Some people have saved for three, five, ten years. And they're coming to us because they're by default expecting spectacle. Mm -hmm. They're expecting a high level of customer experience. They're expected to be catered to and they're expected to be wowed. So for us, it's built into our DNA. It's built into our product. So it's, it's not, not a, choice. a choice. It's not a well, choice. And it's not a choice because, not because it's convenient that I'd be a choice. It's not a choice because you wouldn't be in business. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, you know, one of, the, one of the things that jumps out at me when I think about it through that lens is, what if that was my business? Like, yeah. what if I thought about my business? Because it's it, my my biases, yeah. right? I, I believe you will be out of business. Yeah, yeah. It, customer experience is a thing you have to think about, you have to look at, you have to intend, yeah. and yet at the same time, it's not a choice. So yeah. it's not saying that it's something that happens by default or something you can, you you should do or must do mm -hmm. to stay alive. It's something you have to intend because it doesn't feel like customer experience if I'm not intentionally thinking through, exactly. empathizing with what is that customer doing. Yeah. You said you know, three things that made me realize how much you guys understand the needs or the empathy of your customers. Saving for three to five years is a choice they made. Yeah. Like, and, and flying and to Vegas, is flying a to Vegas yeah. is a choice. They as made. opposed to Orlando or Co yeah. coming to a show and getting dressed up and doing mm -hmm. whatever people do to, to get ready for this mm -hmm. experience is an expense. It's a yeah. choice. And they come in with loaded expectations yeah. and then they leave with bigger smiles on their yeah. face. And to do that, how many nights a week are these shows? Um, we do two shows a night, five nights a week, 400 shows a year across seven shows in Vegas. So yeah. day and in eight and day out shows. to yeah. do that. And, yeah. th and that's why I titled this World Class, because day in and day out to do that for one year, let alone 20-something yeah. years, yeah. is immediately world class. So how do you humanize Cirque du Soleil for me, for 
Joe Smith yeah. for Susie Johnson. Well, we put you in spandex. <laughs> no, no, we don't do that. Well, that's where spark sessions come into. <laughs> that's we, when we, yeah, 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 yeah. Tune in, folks. Tune in. <laughs> Those Here tickets comes. are free. <laughs> and we're actually, out of business I'll pay you to, to watch that. Show. <laughs> no, that's where spark sessions come in because when people come see the shows, and I've had clients, and, and they sit there and they say, "Wow, look at these." athletes they've been doing this for 50 years well not 50 but you know a long time right. some 50 actually and they're superhuman and what we want to do with spark sessions is humanize Cirque du Soleil and to introduce you to the artist up close and personal and for you to hear the struggles of the artist to get to Cirque du Soleil and the struggles that Cirque du Soleil is facing um, because we can seem perfect and what I like to say is that we're really good at a certain set of things we're really good at customer experience we're really good at collaboration we're really good at teamwork because that has to happen in order for the shows to take place right. and we struggle with things when you come to a spark session or experience you learn the artist struggle and how they overcame it, and you learn Cirque du Soleil struggle. So one of these things, you know, to talk specifically about Spark, one of these things that you guys have done is, is you looked at your, you looked at your footprint, you looked at your shows, mm -hmm. and you realized, like everybody did, that you know, and I'm gonna correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. This is an inference. The product sells itself. Yeah. And I don't say that to diminish the marketing and stuff yeah. that you guys do, because you can't land in McCarran Airport and yeah. not be immersed in Cirque. Yeah. Right? There's billboards, there's out of home, there's all that. It's every in your quarter mile. Cab. You text every us, quarter yeah. mile you're seeing it, you're uh -huh. seeing the lights. So there's a lot of impression marketing. There's mm -hmm. a lot of obviously, once people have experienced it, yeah. they've done that inside your hotel room, you're seeing ads. Yeah. You market, but my point is, is that the product is so good yeah. that it's very easy to get complacent. Yeah. I'm not saying you guys have, I'm saying that the product's so good that it does kind of sell itself. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge because where do you go from here? Exactly. Right? Like there's a scale issue. You have seven shows right now yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. I think you have yeah. 20 worldwide between the touring and traveling. Yeah. You could do 20 more and, and incrementally you know, grow your revenue, but there's a cost to that. Exactly. There, there's a lack of scale to that. Cause, and you don't want to saturate the market. And, yeah. and how many times can you come up with some way to move water a million and a half gallons well, we're gonna, in 20 we, seconds, we'll right? We'll tell you, right? <laughs> we, maybe. You never know. You, never, yeah, I mean, yeah, but, you can yeah, continue yeah. to innovate that way. At the yeah. end of the day, though, you have this base of customers that is, I, I don't want to say highly transactional, yeah. but, but it could be, right? Because yeah. they deal with you when they're here. Yeah. They love it. But when they go home or they walk out of here, where are they? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, the thing is, is that there's a lot of noise on the strip. Um, and we have seven shows, but that's seven of hundreds of shows on the strip. When you walk down the strip, you see uh, offerings for any and everything. You can do almost anything in Vegas, and that's true of our other markets. So what Cirque has to think about is, first of all, how do we offer a product that's genuine? And Spark is that. It's like, okay, what people are really asking for is we want to see what's behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. And so Spark offers that opportunity for corporations that have done the great offerings like the Disney Institute, yep. Second City Works, Harvard Leadership. They're asking what's next. And we have clients that have done everything in the world. I mean, they've literally like climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower, right. you know, kissed the face of the Statue of Liberty, like VIP clients, you know, um, who have they have the world at their foot? They got the feet. budget. Yeah, they got, got the budget. And so for us, they'd seen all the shows. They sat here in the VIP suite, and they said, "Well, what's next?" And we said, "Well, what do you want?" Uh, right, using a right. human-centric design model. Yeah. And they said, "We want to get on the equipment. We want to meet the artist. We want to go behind the scenes, and we want to do that." either because it's just going to be really fun for our clients and really yeah. engaging for our employees, or we want to do that because we have, we have a client coming to us who I can't say the name, but they've been acquired. They're huge, international. Yeah. And we have a new team of C-suites, and we want them to work better together. So how can we do that in a novel way that's not all of these things they've already done? You know, yeah. Because imagine if you have three C-level executives that are coming to you, they probably have already done the Disney Institute. They've probably right. already done Harvard Leadership, which is great. They probably already have done Second City Work. So what's new? Um, and so we really built it from backwards from the client's needs, from well, what and, they were and requesting. So there's a couple things there. I w I'm going to forego the one question because yeah. I was going to ask you, you know, how does it compare to the other leadership stuff that's out there? I think you just hit on that as it's uniquely you. But I also want to say, different. yeah, I also want to say that those things are great. And we take the best practices of those things. And again, we kind of take them to Alice in Wonderland. Right. You know, like right. it's like Tim Burton meets the Harvard Leadership Institute. That's yeah. what I would say. And, and, and so you, you put an experience around leadership development, team mm -hmm. training, all those things that yeah. people consume and buy. Yeah. But what you really did was you also looked at your asset base. Like this theater is 
absolutely gorgeous. But right yeah. now, the only yeah. two people in it are me and you and the camera guys. Exactly. Right. And so this is vacant. Yeah. You know, for however many hours a day, 18 yeah. hours a yeah. day. Right. Yeah. And so how do you take this amazing investment, a 15 or something million dollar yeah. stage? Yeah. And how do you create more asset utilization out of that exactly. without creating another show that mm -hmm. no one's going to come to at 1 p.m.? Yeah, right? repurposing. And, and so be, Spark yeah. was really a way, much like AWS came out of Amazon saying, we built all this infrastructure to run Amazon.com. Yeah. We're only using 17% of it. Let's create a way mm -hmm. to sell this off as a service yeah. and let other companies not have to build this infrastructure. Exactly. And so AWS, which is now one of the fastest mm -hmm. you know, profit centers in Amazon, was literally just looking at their asset utilization and saying, we're 83% inefficient. Yeah. And so Spark to me feels like you guys looking at it saying, we have all these shows, we have these performers, mm -hmm. and then there's this corporate client that's already done business with us or maybe never done business with us because mm -hmm. they don't want to just take people to a show where they're going to be sitting quiet. Yeah. They want to take them to something different. Yeah. And so you listen to that, Spark is the spawn of that. How yeah. long has this Spark been around? Well, we're a little over a year now. Yeah. Okay, a awesome. Over a year. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, really. Still pretty and, young. <laughs> and your background is, I mean, you've been in content and curriculum development yeah, and, and things yeah. like that. And so your role within Spark is you, you create the curriculum, you yeah. help design it, and then you yeah. deliver it. Exactly. So I and Chris Chansky, Emily Reeves and team, and yep. the, the production teams, we all work together to come up with these ideas of Spark sessions and experiences. My role is really to take uh, the best practices in education uh, and training and team development and to mirror those with Cirque assets. So I came out of the world of consulting. I was in education for years. Okay. I was a director of interns. And um, you know we had been using some of these types of, of approaches in that world and then when you marry those with Cirque assets I mean come on yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. it gives you a really nice palette to paint with yeah. you have performers you can draw on um, when when companies have come to you like Google and things like that and brought their teams here what were some of the insights they took away that they weren't expecting what do you what do you think from your perspective well one thing I, lifetime fitness was a really great example um, of that and what lifetime got out of our session was the fact that if you throw the problem back to your employees, they're going to come up with some amazing solutions. Uh, I think that came in Australia came to us with the understanding that they wanted to learn about teamwork and leadership and operational efficiency. Mm -hmm. And they saw ways to be more efficient using Cirque du Soleil as a case study. Um, one insurance group came to us and one of the key things that they got out of our session was that if you use positive, progressive, proactive language mm -hmm. um, instead of maybe some leaders might feel like yelling right. at um, their employees or intimidating their employees yeah. is the best way to get things out of them. They've learned at Cirque that, you know, when an acrobat is four stories high, yelling's not the best way to get the... I was just going to say, so they, yeah, they exactly. got these insights due to some of the panel discussion, because I know yeah. you put the artists uh, on panels yeah. as part of the 90-minute experience. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, you ask some questions. Does the audience ask some questions? How does that, how does that work? So for the... And how do you pick them? Because you have to pick the right artist, too. Yes, yes. We literally curate. So let's say okay. if you came to us, you were company X, and you said, we want to learn about onboarding. Okay. And one of the challenges that we face at Cirque du Soleil with onboarding is that we have to take competitive um, athletes and turn right. them into collaborators. So we would choose a specific artists and athletes and coaches who have un uh, undergone that experience and can talk fluently about it. So um, we look across the seven shows and say, hey, maybe the head coach from O is going to be best to talk about that because he was in creation. And maybe uh, Victoria from um, Zarkanda is going to be the best to talk about that because she's worked across eight shows. Or maybe Chris Chansky because she's worked on touring. So we literally curate across our 150, uh, 1,500 employees in Vegas to wow. hand select the key panelists that will work best and, for you. And there's a point in there that I didn't want to go miss because I'm thinking about any organization, but sales team, you know, if you ask most organizations or organizational yeah. leaders, who do you want to hire? You want to hire someone with a will to win, with, you know, with that competitive drive. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you said earlier about superhero in nature, like when yeah. you watch this show and you realize you're a human being sitting, eating popcorn yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah. watching another human being bend their body and balance it four stories high yeah, in a way that yeah. you can't even do laying on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you're going, well, I'm a human, they're a human, but we're not the same, yeah, right? Yeah. And yet, at the end of the day, what the real lesson isn't their ability. It's it's the ability to do it in concert with one yes, another. Exactly. Because what, so, you know, the, the athleticism is the apparent piece. Yeah. The, the undertone of that that jumped out at me is those people have to be so competitive to get their bodies and their performance to that level, which is beyond yeah. 1%. Yeah. 
yet they have to be willing to collaborate be the ultimate team player yeah because yeah. life if nothing else is on the line potentially yeah. if not limb yeah in some of these scenarios and, and and what's interesting about that chris is that even on the stage of oh we have people that were uh competing against each other years ago and they're collaborating so that's what's really interesting yeah is and onboarding is something we talk a lot about to other teams because how do you take competitors and make them collaborators and every company faces that you know when you have commissions and and goals oh, yeah sure yeah and how do you help people be collaborative and it, the still without time, losing the, yeah, the will to yeah, compete right yeah like you don't want to change them you don't yeah. want to numb them out but to at perform the same time, at their highest that would but you say, want to show yeah. them how they can go further together yeah, exactly so exactly um so that's uh, that can definitely i can see why that's an insight what what is some of the aha moments i'm curious from the performer side how has spark it's a year mm -hmm. old helped your performers create a deeper love or a deeper um relationship with cirque because i would yeah, imagine they're super yeah. proud to be a performer yeah, at cirque because yeah, it's yeah. it's not easy to get to yeah but i would also imagine that anybody can get like you know man this is tiring fifth yeah. show this week yeah. my legs are sore when they're on a panel and they're serving in that way, have you seen any noticeable change? Have, have you gotten feedback? I'm just yeah, curious. Well, the, we, on we, one of the things that we suffer from at Cirque, I would say, is this plague of greatness. So Wellington Lima is a really great example. We were hosting a group from Australia, another group from Australia, and they had come specifically for the Spark experience with Wellington. And mm -hmm. I said, Wellington, now is the time for you to talk about all the great things that you've done. And he said, well, I haven't done anything great. I was like, well, you were on the Brazilian national team you just performed for Red Bull, you were at the Oscars, and, and he was like, yeah, but everyone at Cirque has done that. And it's like, yes, but no one in the world has done that. Only you have done that in right. the world. So um, what these panels help our performers to do is to really see how amazing their levels of talent are, because they don't see it here. When, you, when everyone's competed for the Olympics, it's like, oh, that's just a thing that everyone's done. When everyone's performed for the Oscars, oh, it's just a thing that everyone's I think done. That's a, I think yeah. that's an interesting insight for me anyway that you know we want to just call out maybe yeah. ask some questions about it in a, in a couple minutes here um in your company if you're great assuming that you're listening to this and you have great performers are you wellington right yeah, are you yeah. are you there's a difference between being humble there's a difference between being, and being driven, ignorant of your and, own greatness and then there's yeah. a difference between being ignorant or just disconnected from yeah. the shit you've done right yeah, like yeah, sometimes yeah. it's okay to just pause and go well, wow. But I also think in companies, the metaphor is that you have to help them reflect. You have to build right. on something. Spark, in addition to being revenue generating in our next Blue Ocean, yeah. it helps our uh, employees reflect on all the things you do well. We were just talking to our, uh, our PR team, and one of our PR teams, she said, oh, I have to go to London again. And, and it's like, listen to you. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. You. you know, like, or we just did uh, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars. She's like, yeah. oh, I'm just coming off Dancing with the Stars. I'm like... You know, like the devil wears Prada, as she says, yeah. uh, a million girls will kill to have this job. Right. And we have to remember that. And for other top performing companies, right. you have to help your employees remember that. For Google or an Adobe or a Lifetime Fitness or a Kmart yeah. Australia, you have to help them remember that you are the best of the best. So I want to shift gears a little bit. So yeah. I, th I think, you know, we got a clear understanding about Spark because obviously yeah. they can go to uh, Spark by Cirque uh -huh. dot com. Uh -huh. Yep. S P A R K by Cirque. .com. We'll put it in the uh, yeah. chat feed so yeah. you, you don't have to remember it. It's a um, private website. There's it's a, a private website. So but Chris will give you the password. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll put it in the chat during Q and A. You'll be able to enter it and, and learn about it and get in connection. Yeah. Talk to me about um, what Cirque is struggling with from an operational standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, from a customer experience. We've talked about some of the solutions you do, yeah. you're doing things well. Where do you guys need your own insights? Where are you looking for, you know, um, ahas or or you know, sea level help to, to say, hey, here's something we did at our company to align this or that. Like, what are yeah. the areas of concern as it relates to Cirque's growth moving forward from a marketing and from a customer experience standpoint? I think well, that's a good question um, because when people come to us, they think that Cirque is perfect. And we are perfect at the 90 minute spectacle. When right. people come to Vegas, they come to us and they experience us for 90 minutes. And if we're lucky, they go to the gift shop and they yep. purchase a trinket. How do we live beyond the 90 minutes? And that's something we're working on. The other thing yeah. is, is your customer relationship, right? Yeah. Those 90 minutes you own. I, I like that. Yeah. I, I would agree with you there because yeah. the shows I've seen, they're perfect. I, I, I can't d say anything bad about them. I'm sure yeah. people are going, oh, tonight was a little better than last night. But no one could argue with your shows. Yeah. So perfect inside the 90. How do we, how do we live with you any yeah. other hour of the day, yeah. any other day of the week when you're not in Vegas? One of the, mm -hmm. one of the things that I was talking with Chris about um, offline was – shocking was uh that during um conventions yeah your business actually struggles yeah which yeah. 
it makes sense after she explained it, and, yeah. and I'll have you maybe kind of explain it from your words, but it didn't make sense to me at first. Well, well the convention Because you'd think yeah, more people, no, right? This is people, Vegas. More, That's good for business. More people, yes, in a convention, usually outside of the Strip. And for CES, for example, everyone's going to be outside of the Strip at the convention center, which is great, and they have a rigorous schedule. It's like yeah. boom, 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 boom. During the day, I want to see all these things, you know, dinner with someone, and then some special event at night. So right. what we have to do... there's a lot of parties. There's a lot of parties. There's competing yeah, things. there's competing things, and very important things. Right. So um, we have to figure out how to magnetize that convention. How do you lore. insert into that? Yeah. In a, yeah. In a way that doesn't disrupt and yeah. adds value, but at the same time, that's a huge event and, and yeah. a lot of big events come here and, and so if that means mm -hmm. that the shows aren't full yeah. that's almost a, a problem more than it is a solution exactly. so you guys have to invent a way yeah. which Spark is part of Spark is part of that but you have to invent a way where you're not asking people to change their behavior yeah but you're meeting them where they are yeah. with another way to be perfect for 90 minutes in their exactly, life. Exactly, right? exactly. So what we're trying to do, or what we have done actually with Spark, is we can bookend those conventions and say, if you're coming for CES Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, see us on Monday at Spark or see us on Friday. And it gives yeah. them a, a reason. You're already spending money, or your yeah. company's spending the money right, <laughs> for right, you right. to come here. You just yeah. tack on that day and pay for your own hotel and come do something with us. So we're trying to get there, but it's yep. still a struggle. Another thing that we're working on, we have a great constellation of partners, Desi Guao, Apple Core, MGM, Disney, and at the same time, all of them are different brand with different brand signatures. And how do we continue to fit into that brand signature? This theater, each theater is a great example of that. Like the Bellagio is regal and, and it fits, um, it fits. Um, oh, our theater fits that. Yeah. And then when you look at MJ1, it, it definitely fits right. the Mandalay Bay property. It's chic and it's yeah. contemporary. So whenever we have a partner, we have to figure out how to marry our unique brand signature to their needs, goals, and desires. So that's something that we, we have to work hard on our hard on and continually invest in yeah yeah well i um i want to get us to the q a section yeah. I, I think i want to give you one more chance to kind of either make an ask mm. um because we're going to dive into some live chat q a it's been going yeah. on the whole time we've been yeah. we've been talking um so either you can make an ask mm -hmm. uh or 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 throw out one more thing you think people would want to think about okay. we can hear in the background yeah. we've got a, a, all the guys doing the work thing. back there <laughs> and the uh, man, i'm getting yep. so yep. excited yep. to see the show tonight yeah. so yeah. they um you know that's already going on, so we'll, we're going to wrap this part up yeah. and go to Q and A. But yeah. one, you know, parting thought, whatever, yeah. whatever it may be. I would say use Cirque du Soleil as a metaphor, as a case study. Spark does that because we talked about this. There are yeah. certain things that, um, for other businesses, they are a choice, but we're tasked to do. Yeah. We have to deliver high levels of customer service. We have to collaborate across departments and across shows. Each show is literally its own company, and we have seven companies in Las Vegas. Right. Um, we have to com communicate cross-culturally because we have 50 nationalities at Cirque. We have about 25 wow. in Vegas, and we have shows traveling around the world. So imagine arriving in Spain, and you have yeah. 25 different languages, and then you're in a foreign country. So I think that there are some ways that That's Cirque can lend learnings to corporations. Well, yeah. I agree. I, yeah. I think, you know, a couple takeaways for me, I think immediately, I love the idea that, you know, when you think of spectacle, yeah. collaboration and alignment against customer experience, meaning yeah. everyone marching in one direction, yeah. which is this is the best 90 minutes of this person's yeah. life. Yeah. That's a day in, day out thing yeah. that is a choice, but not a choice. Not because a choice, you yeah. are not Cirque du Soleil yeah. without that being a mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. The, the layering on of how you guys have imagined uh, the, the engineering around the apparatus and the yeah. stage to deliver that spectacle, but then communicate against 25 or 50 languages, yeah, yeah, right? Which yeah. is, oh yeah, that's obvious. They, they have performance, but I yeah. never thought about that. And cultural and, differences. And yeah. cultural differences. differences yeah. And the booth and the music and the ticket yeah. people. Yeah. And so that it becomes this partners. seamless thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a case study in and of itself. Like yeah. everybody should be flying out here and, and going, how do you do a show? Yeah. Because I think, although you're looking for ways to go, how do we now engineer this business, the corporate side mm -hmm. of this and the marketing side of this, to create deeper, broader relationships with our customer outside of this room. Yeah. Inside of this room, everybody listening to this could be taking a PhD in yeah. operational efficiency and customer experience from yeah. you. So it's yeah. been a pleasure. Thanks, Chris. And, uh, I can't wait to see the show tonight. Yeah, yeah. So guys, that was one of my favorite interviews. I can't wait to jump into Q&A, but some of you might be interested in what Spark is and how you can take advantage of it. So please watch this short clip and we'll be right back with Jay and I for live Q&A.
If I was recommending a spark session, what I would say is you're going to have a lot of fun, you're going to learn a lot of things, and you're really going to enjoy learning about what it takes to put on a great production. We've already started to work together in a more creative way, in an unstructured way. We've had to think on our feet and try new challenges, and those are all great things that build a great team. I think any company worldwide should be a part of a Cirque Spark session for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is an environment that is unusual for people. Because of that, it's going to get them out of their comfort zone, and so the learning application is just going to be more poignant. The second thing is, is that when you go into experiential learning, you want people that know how to do it. So it's not just about being on stage. There's actually learning, and there's expectation around it. And I think the Cirque Spark leadership has absolutely nailed that. So it's an un unbelievable environment. But man, I think the outcome and the expectation of outcome from the CERC staff uh, was spot on. So an excellent opportunity from one educator to another, you got to do it. So if I'm a company, I want to know what are my options? How can I participate in Spark? What's custom? What's off the rack? Give us the overview. We have Cirque du Soleil Spark experiences, okay. which are shorter, one hour for larger groups, and we have custom-built Spark sessions where you get on our apparatuses. In the Spark experiences, we have an opening on your topic of choice. We have a great panel discussion, which can include artists and technicians. Mm -hmm. And then you can do things like go into the Ka Theater, uh, which is nine stories high, okay. and you can ride the lift two stories below, below the theater, and that 800,000 pound stage will rotate overhead, and you'll be inside out of the car machine wow. and then if you want an experience or you want something super duper you can go to the spark session you can come to like the O theater for example you can meet the artist up close in costume and makeup and the costumes are really intricate you'll see a little bit of them later Chris yeah, and yeah. Um, you we won't put you in them but you'll see them <laughs> later and then you can get on the Cirque Soul, you can fly high in the air and then you can perform on our stage and you talk about team building that's taking team building to the very next and level these things are these this is not uh, you know I want to say it's not expensive it's 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 extremely valuable from what I, I think they start as low as like the 22k range or something. I mean, yeah, right? you can do um, a spark note inside, um, outside of our theater. Like if you have yeah. uh, attendees of five or ten thousand, like Adobe, um, you can't bring ten thousand oh, people wow. into our theater. Yeah, that's but big. we can come to you. We can come with a custom-built panel discussion, and you can end with an amazing act in inside theater, of your conference space. In the theater, if I'm a company and I want to bring a mix of employees or uh, key accounts or whatever. Yeah. What are the capacities of a Spark experience or a Spark session? Like, just so people have an idea of if I have 50 to 100 people versus 500 to 1,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah bucket saying. that for them so they can understand before they get in touch with you. Exactly. You know? For team building, there is a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 40 to 45 because okay. you want to keep it intimate. And yep. that's going to be a premium investment for people who are trying to take it to the next level. And gotcha. many, many companies are. And for the Spark experience, we can do a minimum of 50. We want to keep a maximum of 250 or 300. Okay. Um, the Ka experience is probably our most popular. It caps at 150 because we want to get everyone on that lift and below, and we want everyone to have that wow moment. When you when you get these huge crowds, you can't really do that with the Ka experience. Awesome. And again, if you have groups of five or 10,000 and you're in Vegas and you have a conference, 
we can bring Cirque du Soleil to you. We'll bring it to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll bring it to your well, conference they, They've got plenty of information, yeah. and we're going to go to sparkbycirque.com. We'll give you the passcode in the bottom of this video here. And it's in a the secret chat. society. It's, it's a secret, secret society, society. <laughs> but, but uh, thank you for that. I think people are probably going to want to know that. So we'll, we'll go right to Q&A now, and uh, let's talk about your business questions and your insights for Jay. Yeah.